Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today I'm going to start covering my toughest, probably most important and strongest tournament so far uh, that I've ever played. It's the first A Croatian League uh, that was played at the end of September and at the beginning of October. Now, the, the league is played on six boards. Uh, you all stay in the same hotel all the teams and there were a couple of leagues played at the same time the first a league the first b league and the second league and the women's first league so this is the top top most elite uh, league in croatian chess apart from the croatian chess, chess championship which is closed and played by maybe 15 grandmasters this is as good as it gets now you may be wondering why i'm playing that's a legitimate question i should not uh, have been playing the, the first league, of course, because I'm way too weak. However, because of the COVID situation, we were unable, our team was unable to, to get uh, all the strong players that it would have gotten uh, normally that, that we had playing in, in previous years. So I play uh, for my team's second team. So we have two teams. The first team is in the first A league. The second team is in the third league, and there I'm strong enough. But anyway, I got to play. And uh, the feeling before the tournament was, I just don't want to have zero out of nine. That, that was the only thing I, I wanted. Uh, I knew that I was going to play a couple of GMs, a couple of IMs, and probably FMs were going to be the, the rest of the people. My opponent in first round was an international master. Uh, Armanda and of course I, I was preparing for every game like a maniac and I wanted to do well uh, even if I lose I wanted to I, I didn't want to go down without a fight and I didn't want to embarrass myself uh, in this game I, I did the exact opposite unfortunately so, so let me show you how the league started so I'm white uh, and I played pawn to d4 uh, I was actually preparing e4 against this opponent for a couple of days. Uh, I'd been preparing, for, so we knew which teams were playing the league. So it's it's 10 teams, everybody plays everybody in nine rounds. Uh, and I knew which players I was going to play mostly because teams have more than six people, usually with substitutions. So I may play a different person, but I've been preparing for most potential opponents for a month. Uh, before the league. So for this opponent I was preparing e4 but a few days before the game uh, before the league I decided to try out the Jabala type London once again and play with knight c3 against him because he plays g6 setups. So anyway we have knight f6 and bishop to f4 and here he always plays g6 against which of course I, I would have played knight c3 and then maybe provoked d5. However, he started with pawn to d6. And now uh, I, I played a move which... Okay, I, I played knight c3, uh, which I'd intended to play. The problem in this game, as you're going to see, is me trying to stick to what I wanted to play instead of adjusting to the position accordingly. Uh, which is something I, I, I knew I should have done, but I still wanted to play what I've been preparing. That That's just a stupid decision. So instead of playing an optimal setup, I played the setup that I wanted to play, even though I knew the optimal setup well. That may be hard to understand. Here he played knight b to d7. Of course, if he plays g6, then I can simply go e4 and, and I have a pleasant position. But after knight b to d7, He's threatening to play e5, and now we are in a Philidor position in which my bishop is for some reason on f4. And my coach, when we looked at this game, said that, well, your bishop should be on e3 in these positions. Well, that's true, but from a London move order, it's really hard to do that uh, because I was aiming for a different position. I agree that it would have been optimal to have my pawn on e4 and my bishop on e3 in this type of position where I could play queen d2, f3, castle, queen side. He plays c5, g6. We have a sort of dragon position if he goes for that. And if he goes for e5, we have a Philidor type position. And here, uh, obviously, he, he played knight bd7 to play e5. 
So I should play knight f3 to prevent e5. There's just no doubt about that. Instead of that, I play the move, which I was going to play against his usual setup because I was expecting him to go for his usual setup. So I played e4, which is just a blunder. I don't remember ever blundering on move 4. Uh, and it, it's not about theory. I knew what the correct move was. Again, it's about my personal choice, which was just bad. Again, if he plays pawn to g6, then I'm happy. I can play queen d2, bishop g7, bishop h6, castles, just... And they have a pleasant position. But of course, he, he plays e5. And now he gains a tempo on my bishop. I have to move my bishop or I have to take. Both are bad. I chose the worst option. So I took on e5. Uh, taking on e5 gives black such a pleasant position. Gives black everything he wants. Now, my coach plays these positions with black. He always plays the Philidor slash Pirts. And, and he is very familiar with them. And when we looked at this game, I could see in his eyes that he... He, he looked really disappointed and he, he thought this was just horrible and it was so so what's the problem uh, I, I should play bishop e3 just accept that i'm slightly worse when i play d5 uh yeah I, I i gave this move a double question mark in the study uh what happens well there's still a tempo gain on my bishop and his bishop is open now instead of bishop to e3 here i should probably concede to being much worse and just play bishop to d2 making his bishop much better than mine uh, but i played bishop e3 wanted to wanting to keep some activity and now i have to waste more tempi so he plays bishop b4 and basically here black is going to castle play pawn to c6 and just crush me this is unbelievable just knight b6 bishop e6 a5, a4. This already on Grandmaster level should be losing. On my level, of course, anything can happen. But my opponent is an IM. Okay, so I have to defend my pawn, so f3. Castles, queen d2. Uh, I need to get away uh, from the center with my king. Pawn to c6, perfectly logical. Restricting my pieces and preparing a queenside attack if I should castle. Uh, bishop c4 makes sense i have to develop before i play knight g2 and here uh, queen e7 was played which is okay i think it was probably stronger to just go b5 a5 uh, and just start pressing because after b5 bishop b3 maybe not a5 straight away but just knight b6 and getting this knight into c4 after bishop e6 is extremely strong if he doesn't want to trade queens then fine queen e7 or even queen c7 he played queen e7, and here I played a3. And uh, a3 is not a logical move. Why is a3 not a logical move? Uh, because black wants to trade this bishop for this bishop, and the only way to do that is to play bishop c5, and a3 loses a tempo if black wants to do that. So playing a3 and black playing bishop c5 just helps black what he wants to do. Make, makes my position slightly weaker because if I castle queenside this is going to be a target to undermine and it's just a bad move I should have played knight g2 straight away if he wants to play bishop c5 then I did not lose a tempo I can just castle and th this is much better obviously I don't have a pawn on a3 and I've, my king is on g1 okay but a3 Bishop c5, knight g2 now, knight b6, bishop to b3, and bishop to e6. And in this position, obviously, it's it's very hard to play for white. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what exactly I should be doing here. The only thing I do know, or the only thing I did know during the game, is that I have to trade pieces off. If I trade pieces off, then I'm okay. If I don't trade pieces off, I'm in trouble. So <clears throat> I found a bad way and a fancy way to trade pieces. Here's what I should have done. And th this is just a sensible, simple solution to my problem. Uh, I should just play bishop c5. And after queen c5, just take on e6, f6, 
in our castle somewhere. Uh, again, it should be slightly worse, but I can go castles queen side, rook d8, queen e1, king b1, knight c1, knight b3, and, and I should be able to hold. This is a weakness. It does restrict my knights a lot. But if I can get my knight into c5 at some point, maybe trade off knights with, with knight a4 at some point, then I could be okay. Instead of that, I played knight a4 straight away. And again, I gave this move a double question mark because it's absurd. I did manage to equalize out of that dreadful opening. Uh, my opponent did not play the most precise moves. He played knight b6 before b5. He didn't start attacking. So, I mean, his moves were not blunders. They were just not the most precise way to punish my, my poor opening play. But knight a4 gives my equality away. Why? Uh, he takes on a4. Uh, if, if he doesn't take on a4, I take on c5. And I should be okay. If he takes on e3, I got my queen away from the d-file. And if something like this happens and he takes on b3, I can even take with my queen. And again, peace trades help me. But after knight a4, he just takes on a4. And here's the problem. Uh, bishop takes a4 and he plays knight to d7. And now we can see uh, that the strategic battle in this middle game is all about the c5 square. Why is it about the c5 square? Well, I'm probably going to have a pawn on b3 which means that the b3 square and the d3 squares are going to be extremely weak. Why am I going to have a pawn on b3? Well, if he ever plays b5, which he should and could play whenever he wants, in fact, he could have played it now, I'm going to have to recapture with the c-pawn. For example, if he'd played uh, b5 here, uh, then here, and I, I can probably take on c5 first, but let me just show you this is going to happen anyway, and then plays knight d7. Once this knight reaches c5, uh, this is strategically very hard to hold because you have two very bad weaknesses. But he played knight d7 first, and here I played the, the final mistake, after which there is no return anymore. So, and, and also, if I wanted to explain this move, I just couldn't. Uh, I just don't know what to say. I played queen to c3. Uh, I guess I wanted to be able to meet b5 with bishop to b3. But that's about it. Uh, also maybe avoiding rook to d8. Instead of that, as was pointed out by, by my coach and what we analyzed uh, is knight c1. And knight c1 is a great idea, which I did see and I played it a few moves later, but I only played it when it, it was already impossible to control c5 sufficiently. Why is knight c1 good here? Well, knight c1 is good here because it prevents this idea of cb, which means that d3 and b3 are protected. So it fights for c5 directly because I can play knight b3 and knight d3. And it also <clears throat> controls the two key weaknesses uh, in case c5 is lost. So in case I lose the key square, the biggest weaknesses that can be targeted from c5 are supported. So knight c1 is uh, a, a very good move. The position is still worse for white, but knight c1 is is a great way to try and salvage things. For example, rook f to d8, knight to d3, bishop e3, queen e3, he plays knight b6 here, again, doubles my pawns, but now it's very hard to, to get the knight uh, into c5. Uh, rook to d4 maybe, castles king side, of course black is better, but maybe I can hold this. Maybe I can hold this. Uh, it's not easy, but it would have been much easier than the game. Instead, queen c3. And now simply bishop e3, queen e3, and knight c5. And yeah, uh, you can try playing this position for white. Uh, I think it's a great example uh, exercise for positions which are slightly worse, 
not bad enough to be lost, but worse, and which are very hard to hold. So this is very good for a training position. Set it up against a stronger player, try to hold with white pieces. I, th I think it will be very hard and a very good exercise. Okay, bishop b3. That's what I have to play, takes. Of course, he takes with the bishop. He wants to put pressure on d3 and b3. And then, yeah, d3 is terminally weak. He plays rook f to d8. Now, as I said, I played knight c1, but it's too late. I'm, I've disconnected my rooks or potentially disconnected them once I managed to get castled. And obviously, <laughs> my position is busted. Uh, worse pawn structure, worse knight, worse rooks, uh, bad king. Uh, it's just unable to castle. Okay, and here my opponent played a brilliant move. Queen h4 check, g3, and queen to h3. And uh, for the first five minutes, I wanted to resign. Uh, and then I decided not to resign because it's the first game in the league. And honestly, I didn't want to be the first one to finish. Uh, so I didn't resign. I cannot take the knight. If I take the knight, queen to g2 wins. Uh, threatening mate, threatening the rook. Uh, there is no way to save everything. Uh, there's just no way. Uh, yeah, so I played king to f2, preventing queen to g2. Knight e6, a very good move. Uh, now that d3 has been defended by the knight, he's coming into d4. I played knight e2, defending d4. Rook d7, and here I, I have to give up the h2 pawn with check. If I don't give it up, then I'm never getting my rook to the center. Obviously, d1 is still defended by his d7 rook, so I'm going to have to trade, which means that h2 is loose. But if I don't play rook d1, then I, I, knight g1 is just... I, I, I better have resigned. So rook a d1 takes, takes, queen h2, king f1, h6, solving the last issue in his position, very professional. Rook d7 doesn't help queen h3 king f2 knight f4 i mean i saw that rook d7 the rook on d7 can be attacked by knight f4 but i just thought okay so so what i'm going to move my rook so rook d6 now obviously my rook on d6 doesn't do anything queen h2 check uh, king f1 queen g2 check king e1 knight e2 queen e2 queen g3 King d2, queen g5, um, just a million pawns down with a bad position. King c2, rook d8, f4, I tried, ef4, e5, uh, rook takes d6, and I resigned, because if e d6, queen f6, king b1, queen d6, I'm going to be four pawns down. So yeah, uh, starting the league like this uh, was tough. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I did it to myself, I, I I played a bad opening, I played a bad middle game, and then I got crushed with a very nice tactical piece, sacrifice, uh, which I couldn't accept. I mean, my opponent played well, I didn't, and, and that's about it. Uh, still, I've been through this game maybe five times since. Uh, and every time I looked at it, it was less and less, uh, well, it was harder to understand why I made those mistakes. But I still did make them. I don't think I, I make such obvious mistakes usually, especially not in the opening. So this, is, this game gave me a lot to think about, and I think I've been proved on it a lot since since the game so yeah uh, again another game which is hard to show which was hard to show but <clears throat> that's what i'm going to do i'm going to show you all the bad games and hopefully more good games in the future uh, thank you very much for watching stay tuned for more chess bye bye